right, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about Chapter 4, Evaluating a Company's Resources, Capabilities, and Competencies. Isn't that a big word? Basically, we're going to do an internal evaluation of what we have, what kind of intellect we have, and competencies, which means not really, but when you talk about a company's competencies, what makes us kind of better than somebody else is doing the same thing? So what is Coca-Cola's competency? I could mention several of them. Well, they got a great tasting product. I didn't say the best tasting product in the world, it's a great tasting product. They've got an incredible distribution center. They are so competent in that they wrote the book on marketing. So they have competencies, internal intellects that, that just, they wrote the book on these things and they know it as good or better than anybody else. So that's what I mean by internal competencies. Uh, and know these things and know what you can do. So, we're looking at competencies and resources that are going to give me a competitive advantage. A lot of people call it competitive power. I want to be leading the pack. I don't want to be following the pack. I want to be the people, that, the guy that people are chasing. I want to be the company that everybody wants to aspire to. So when I evaluate my resources and my capabilities and my competencies, I'm going to look at four questions. Again, four tests. See, you're going not another list. I can remember a list. If I gave you a paragraph, you wouldn't remember it for nothing. But if I give you four things, I can remember that. Oh yeah, number one, number two, I can remember that. So there are four tests, questions you've got to ask to tell if you have competitive power or competitive competencies. Number one, is the resource or capability, so it's not only something I have, but it's something I'm able to do, capability. Is the resource or capability competitively valuable? Does anybody want what I can do? I could pick up pine cones and sell them. I guarantee you I could get them for free. I could knock on people's doors and say, I'll pick your pine cones up if you let me have them. I'll have at it. Thinking that I'm going to start the pine cone industry and sell them till just I'm rich. They have no value to anybody. Yeah, well, I use them to start my fire sometimes, but they have no value to anybody. There's not a pine cone industry, and think about it, they're everywhere. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be great? Just buy some pine trees and boy, you'd be rich. Well, the reason that doesn't happen is because nobody wants pine cones. So, is the resource or capability you have valuable to somebody? Well, Bill Gates had a resource. Actually, he had a capability. You know, Bill Gates didn't wire nothing up. He sold software. And buddy, but boy, did he have a competency for thinking about that and putting that where it belonged. So good for you, Bill. But he absolutely had that. So he had a compatible, uh, something that was competitively valuable, a resource or a capability. Number two, is the resource rare? Is it something that my rivals lack? Now, when you talk about real resources, it should be resources or capabilities. <clears throat> yeah, you, everybody can buy just about what you can buy. That's not a problem. You got enough money, you can figure out how to buy it. But is it rare? A patent, I know patents are only good for seven years, but for seven years, you're the king of the crop. You got it all. So do you have something that others don't have? And can I, can I go after things that, that I can keep away from other people. Now, legally you can't do that and we don't want to do that. But can I do that through a patent? Can I do that through a contract? Can I, can I position myself so that I'm the only one right now in the short term that has the availability of that resource? Um, so can you do that? Can you position yourself in that situation? Number three, is the resource hard to copy? In other words, can somebody imitate what I'm doing and say, we got the same thing he's got, but it's a lot cheaper. Is it hard to copy? So how hard is your stuff to copy? Well, some of this stuff is impossible to copy. 
Um, and when I say copy, I'm talking about intellectually. <clears throat> if you could record like the Beatles, you'd be a bazillionaire. But the reason they had a distinct competence was that nobody could sound like them. Good for them. That's why they made all that money and that's why they were so popular because they were the only game in town that could do what they did. So, can you create something, uh, a technology, a process, a delivery system, whatever, that is real hard to duplicate? Because if you can, you will have that competitive advantage. And number four, um, are there good substitutes for what you're trying to do? Are there good substitutes available for the resources that you need? You need to find that out. Because if there aren't, again, you've got, we talked about that, the five forces model about power of buyer and power suppliers. So if you've got a resource that a supplier has given you and you really can't replace that, then they control you. So you need to find out, are there good substitutes in case this resource runs out or becomes too expensive to buy? Is there another place I can get this to continue my process? So we talked about all that stuff. Um, are there any questions? Uh, Y'all clear with that? All right, I'm glad to see that everybody wore their hats today. Thank you very much. That was great for the decorum. Uh, I thought y'all wouldn't do that, but thank y'all for doing that. Y'all look really good, all dressed up like that, and especially with those hats. Y'all just look, I mean that. I, I'm impressed. You've, you've got my respect here. All right, let's talk a, moment, a little bit more about something we, we've touched on throughout this whole course, a distinct competency. Here's what the definition of a distinct competency is. A competitively valuable activity that a company performs better than its rival. Let's start that over. I'm just, I'm just gonna go. All right, now let's talk about a distinct competency. We've been talking about this since we started this course. A distinct competency, here's what it is. A competitively valuable activity that a company performs better than its rival. A competitively valuable activity. Competitively valuable activity. Think about what those three words mean. It means it's competitive. That means people want it. People want it so bad, other people offer kind of similar things. So I've got competition. People want it so much, I'm not the only one that can provide it. People said, I'm going I'm to go fishing in the same fishing hole you are. It's valuable. That makes it competitive, but it's valuable. People want this stuff. They really like it. And what is the activity that I can involve myself in to deliver it, make it, deliver it, and get it to the customer? A competitively valuable activity that a company performs better than its rivals. What do you do that sets you apart from everybody else? There's got to be something. You have got to continually look for that thing that's going to set you apart. You know, when you get into marketing, they talk about something called differentiation. Um, you know, that, that's a huge part of, of, of Porter's three generic strategies, which we'll talk about at a later date. But differentiation, it's like, I know you don't make a different pen, writing pen than other people. That gum, they all write. How can you make one that is, has that, that distinctive competence, competence where I'll pay $2,000 for it? A pen. Here's the deal, y'all don't remember this. They cross pen, anybody that got a cross pen and pencil set? Real nice. Uh, that's what everybody gave their grandson when they graduated high school. So my grand, both my grandmothers gave me separately a cross pen and pencil set. And it would come in a little box, and then the pen would be in little tiny thin things, but they were gold-plated. 
I know this is 1971. I know they cost 80 bucks. Now, at $71, my grandmothers were spending it. I wish they'd just give me that money, but they gave me those nice pen and pencils. They weren't buying me a pen. They could have gone to a drugstore and bought a 19 cent big pen that would have written just as good as that cross pen, just as well. They could have given me a, literally a 30 cent pencil that would have written just as good as that mechanical pencil wrote. So why did they spend 80 bucks? Because the Cross Company had convinced my grandmother that they had a distinct competence. You're not buying him a pen, you're buying him a writing utensil that's deserving of a high school graduate. He earned this. You wouldn't just put a pencil in his hand. You need to put a cross pen in his hand. And it's worth $80 to you and to him. So they convinced my grandmother. My grandmother did not buy me a pen for graduation. She bought me a cross pen for graduation. It's just like a $19, Ro a $19 Timex watch or a $10,000 Rolex presidential. They both tell real good time. They really do. So why would you spend $10,000 when if your, your objective was to get somebody a time piece, a timekeeping, you can do that for 30 bucks right down there at Walmart. The point is you weren't buying a watch. Rolex spends a ton of money convincing you they have a distinct competence. And the only way to get it is to pay $10,000. But buddy, you'll get it if you pay $10,000. So, you know, I'm sorry if all you can do is go buy that $30 watch at Walmart, but if you really want to give them the watch they deserve. So you deserve a Rolex. You've earned a Rolex. It has nothing to do with what time is it. Although it will tell you that. That's a good little sidebar. But it means so much more. And maybe it does to you, maybe not. To a lot of people, yes. But what Rolex has got to do is to convince you that it means that. Because you really don't see that. I thought it just told time. No, it tells so much more than that. All right, we talked about evaluation and control. That's a huge part of what we do and how we monitor what we do. Because you've got to monitor. You've got to know on a daily basis how are we doing. I know that's laborious and that's tiresome. You can't take a day off. Because if you take a day off, the next day you go, my goodness, what happened yesterday? Well, you weren't paying attention. If you'd have paid attention, you could have fixed that yesterday and you chose not to. So, this ends this chapter. Peace. Y'all have a great day. Read the book. Take the quizzes. Do the discussion board. Do it all. We're going to have too much fun in here. Peace. See y'all later.